Hello there everyone. Today we're going to tie this. This is a polychaete worm or a ragworm. And uh, this is a, a fly that is very, very nice for the Danish sea trout. Um, but also, if, uh, I th see patterns like this uh, for tarpon and stuff like that. If, if you're planning on doing this for tarpon, you should probably tie it a bit bigger. But this is, uh, this is a polychaete worm or a ragworm. Something that, that, that trout feeds on a lot of places. And where you have worms, this will be very good. This is going to be an articulated fly. So it really, really will move a lot. We're going to have the hook all the way back here. Here. But I'm going to show you a trick so you can have either two hooks, one in front and one in back, or you can simply change it up if you want the hook to be in the front instead. I want my hook in the back, that's why we do it like this. So the first thing we need is of course a hook, and this is the Chemco um, uh, 784, um, a really really nice short shanked hook, uh, uh, tremendously, tremendously sharp, it has a very nice uh, tip here, and uh, also a hook I, I would recommend for let's say tube flies, single, single, uh, single hook for, for tube flies and stuff like that, really awesome hook for, for bait fish patterns as well. Um, an underestimated hook that, uh, that really I'm, I, I've, I've, I've G gotten quite quite uh, fond of uh, this this past <laughs> yeah past period of time. Okay, so basically uh, here we go, and uh, and the first thing we need is is we need a tail, and for this. Uh, we're gonna make the tail from this. This is a dubbing blend that I've made of all the materials that this fly is gonna persist of, and uh, you can see exactly how the dubbing is done here. Okay, so now I want to show you how to make the dubbing for these ragworms. Um, and and the, the the thing the thing to do that is and the technique to do that is is quite universal and really really can be applied for a lot of things. I take a bundle of uh, the ice up UV pearl, then I take some um, SLF squirrel uh, in brown, and uh, and first up I just you know pull these apart, turn it over, and and just kind of like so. Basically now I have it a bit mixed up. It's not done, but but uh, that's the first step. Just mix this a bit up before we we move on. Then I take a couple of feathers, and these are uh, are um, marabou feathers. Uh, it's woolly bugger marabou. That is a bit shorter than than the loose marabou feathers. And I take two for this this bundle, maybe maybe two olive and two brown. And what I do is I don't strip the feather the the uh, the. the the fibers off, I, I, I tear them off because I don't want these in full length that will make them too long. So basically I just tear off all, so I kind of like have the base back here, left here, you see that? The base here and, and I only have the tips uh, to add to the mix there. And of course you can do this with uh, whatever colors you prefer and, and whatever uh, colors the polychaete worms, the ragworms you have uh, where, where you fish uh, uh, have. But, uh, but basically for, for the Danish fishing then this, this looks really good. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing to... Uh, oh, that's, that, we don't need the tip like this. So off with that. Uh, to, to, uh, I think this is just an olive. But sculpt, sculpt pin olive is, is nice for this as well. Um, you could for the Danish uh, the Danish uh, species of, of these polychaete worms these ragworms you could you could uh, basically uh, add some blue also because uh, the blue color is, is 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 quite nice for this as well so now i have this big pile of and uh, and you want to be careful not to sneeze now because if you do that then things get very 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 messy so basically you just take all this and just Pull it apart with your fingers. Collect all the marabou that is that is falling out, and then turn it all. Pull pull it out. Turn it over. Pull it out. Turn it over. Pull it out. Turn it over, and then basically from time to time, just gather everything up that is lying on the table and just mash it together like this, and then again push pull it apart add it together, pull it apart, add it together, and then you get this really, really cool, cool dubbing that is perfect for, for worms like this, but also this general technique is, is very good for mixing a lot of different stuff. Uh, I like to add, for instance, deer hairs and, and all sorts of things to, to a dubbing, dubbing mesh like this, because it, it, just, it just gives you a lot of new uh, materials to work with, and, 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 and you, can, you can spice up the stuff you have without having to buy, you know, a lot of new colors and stuff like that. Basically, uh, here you have some really really awesome new things from things that you had already. So now with that being done we are ready to continue with the fly. So 
I hope you uh, you, uh, you you saw how I did the dubbing. Uh, as as you saw in the in the in the the, the dubbing clip, the the fly is going to consist of of four materials, basically, and uh, and then I take a bundle of this uh, dubbing here and I tie this down. So so this is going to be so this is going to have some thing that sticks out here. I'm going to turn this over and tie this. Ah, oh, crap! My tying thread broke. <laughs> yeah, that's that stuff. Ha stuff happens. I think it's because um, I was tying some smaller dries and stuff like that. So the the thread I have here is basically a bit too thin. But it was no problem when I tied this uh, for the for the Danish channel. Tied this fly with with this thread for the Danish channel. So let's see if if it wasn't just me that you know hit the hook part or the hook point or something like that. Okay. So basically there I have my my tail. And this is as as I said it's going to be a ragworm. So it's it is a kind of shaky shaky looking uh, yeah, raggy looking thing. And I think I would like the tail a bit more uh, a bit more fluffy. So so I just add a bit more material here. To this. Of course, you can vary this in, in in a ton of different sizes and stuff like that. And as I said, this is um, this is a, 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 did a, f a fly a few years ago that was called the one worm um, that really really was received well. Um, and and I fished a lot with that, and it has caught me a lot of fish. But this I'm gonna call this the second worm uh, because it's kind of like uh, I would say a better variation of almost identical pattern. What I'm doing now is, is making a dubbing loop. Um, uh, it, it will function the same way. This will just be a lot, a lot, lot more easy uh, to tie, and it will fish as well. It will be easier to cast. So, so basically, uh, a lot of win-win here. So, I'm gonna take my dubbing loop, and then I'm gonna add some of this uh, dubbing that uh, that we made. To the dubbing loop here. Like so, gotta take my dubbing reel. I have left my uh, my CF the, the, the my CF design with the ball bearing. I've left that at home, so I'm gonna use the uh, the CF design that is not as good, but still still functions. Like this, and this is a bit too raggy for my taste, so I'm gonna pull out some of this just to get you know the the right uh, the right density of uh, of this uh, of this this fly and and uh, this part of the fly here so as you can see this really looks shaggy and ragged and and awesome you could probably add some some shaggy dub to this uh, that's a dubbing that consists of uh, of of just uh, small pieces of rubber band uh, that would probably look really awesome in here as well Give this uh, an even more shaggy, raggy feel to it. So basically, that's the first part. I'm gonna tie down the dubbing loop all the way up here at the eye of the hook. Cut it off. Like so. Do a whip finish. And of course, I don't have my varnish here, but yeah, do some super glue or some varnish to, to this thing here. Cutting off, and then I need a shank. And for this n this second part, I'm going to take a shank that is uh, two centimeters long. Um, if if you want, uh, and uh, you could you could of course do uh, however you want uh, this, but but I think that for for my purposes, I'm going to use a two uh, a, a two centimeter a, a twenty millimeter, and uh, and then the second one is going to be one and a half. Uh, centimeter or 15 millimeters so a slightly bigger one and and for this it's it's always nice to have a pair of pliers just near hand that makes uh, attaching these shanks a lot easier and it doesn't matter if if the the double part sticks is is pointing upwards or pointing downwards at least I don't find that has any effect maybe you could say that if you wanted to fish with the hook pointing down, then there's slightly more weight here, so we're just gonna do it like this. I don't think in real life it's gonna have that much of an, of an effect, but now we do it like this. 
And then basically you do exactly the same as we did before. Just applying some thread to close the uh, to close the uh, the shank here. And then I'm going to take a bundle of the dubbing. I'm going to tie that in as a tail to cover up to cover up the uh, the uh, the the eye of the shank like this. I'm going to turn this over and basically there you have it. Now you can't see the see the shank, but it still has all the movement. It, it has a lot of movement freedom in here, as you can see. Very very easy to. Oh shit! I didn't do that. I just blew on it to make it more lively, but that's. <laughs> Just a quick, quick heads up. Don't blow on your desk when you have like a ton of marabou lying around. That's not gonna be pretty. Oh my god, that's annoying. I just made the cleaning up part of this just immensely, immensely, immensely more difficult. <sighs> oh well, it's nice that I have, you know, a, a tying a tying studio uh, out at uh, at the shop. Where, where I can do this so so I won't have to vacuum every single time I tie flies. I basically I just make a new uh, dubbing loop because this is basically just rinse and repeat from the from the from what we did on the hook. So I'm just hanging the dubbing loop off to the side, taking the thread all the way up to the eye here. And then I'm gonna attach some dubbing if I can find some if I haven't blown it all the way with my stupidity. Yeah, I try to, you know, before I add it to the loop, I try to, to distribute it so it, it kind of basically is is out in 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 what I need. So so yeah, I've added the to the to the loop here. I hope that's that's you can yeah, that you can see that. And then basically I do exactly the same as before. I spin the loop. Like this. Continue up along the shank here. It's okay that this has a bit of a bit of bulk here, because uh, the shank is is thinner than the hook shaft. So so in order to have something that is fairly uniform, and we're gonna of course gonna brush a lot of this out uh, later on. Like this. Cut away the dubbing loop, make a whip finish, apply some varnish, and then we're at the, f the last part of this, uh, this fly here. And I'm going to take a 15mm shank. You could, of course, have done this with, uh, let's say, three 15 millimeter shanks. I like the, uh, you can get a, uh, an articulated fish spine uh, kit where you have, you, you get uh, 24 shanks and you get a lot of different sizes and stuff like that. This is a really cool product because there's a lot of different sizes in here. There is, I think it's, there are four sizes. So it's about, it's six. <laughs> And I used to be a math teacher. Imagine how long it took me there. So there's six of each in uh, of each size in 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 this package. So so you have something to to fool around with, to mess around with. Of course, you can just you can just buy the uh, the size that you want. If if you know exactly what size you want, you can buy the 15 millimeter. So basically, I took the uh, the pliers here and applied some pressure to this because uh, I need to get a bead on here. And in order to do that, I need this to open fairly wide. Uh, because I want this fly to dive, to nose dive. So I took a beat. I'm gonna take a black beat here and push it on there. Like so. And uh, and then I'm of course gonna take my pliers and bend this back into shape. If that's possible. If I didn't if I apply too much pressure before, I'm gonna gonna attach it to the vise, then it's probably gonna be easier. Yeah, like so. 
and of course again then I, I mount the uh, the fly into the shank here attach the shank to the vise and then I'm that was a bit optimistic of me to think that this 14-0 thread would be strong enough to like so to would be strong enough to actually push that metal back into place ah uh, crap <laughs> now everything falls apart I just have to you know reload my bobbin yeah that sort of stuff happens to me all of the time but it probably never happens to do to you do it you probably never had uh, any problems at all with uh, a thread that breaks off or something like that it's it's probably only me that has the problem but it's exactly the same as before I'm gonna take a bundle of the dubbing here I'm gonna tie this down so it's so it, it gives kind of a, a tail tail feel to it that that covers the uh, the, the the where the uh, where the articulate where the shanks uh, are, are linked up and then uh, for this small amount of of uh, of shank uh, I'm just gonna take some dubbing and I'm just I don't, I don't want to bother with the dubbing loop for this this will be this will be fine just basically uh, you know I don't know I don't know the exact uh, funnel it on there I don't know if that's the correct English term but you know basically just add some dubbing here without too much fuss and then to finish this off I'd like to finish it off with a hackle and for that I'm, I'm a, a partridge would be okay but but I really like these uh, these whiting Brahma uh, hen, hen saddles they are really really awesome both in in color and in markings and stuff like that really really truly awesome uh, awesome awesome product awesome feathers from from Whiting as always I'm gonna tie that down gonna turn the hackle here Well, you don't actually need this, but it's it's pretty cool to have something to finish off the fly, I think. And this this looks good and it, it has a good feel to it, so I like to do it like this. I'm gonna make my, my way finish. And here you actually don't need the varnish because the 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 bead is gonna protect uh, protect your nut. So basically, uh, there you have it, but of course, um, as I said, if you want the hook in the front, then uh, you should basically uh, start with a shank. Basically, you should start here, start with a the shank, then add all the shanks that you want. And if you want an, an even bigger one than this, it's basically just, you know, rinse and repeat, make some on, some new ones. But if you want another um, another hook on this, or if you want, uh, want it uh, to, to be uh, the hook in front, and then basically you, you would have all the shanks here behind, what, what you would basically do is, is take a hook, apply some tying thread, then take some uh, some monofilament or uh, or whatever, but monofilament is is fine for this, unless you're you're fishing with really really uh, uh, toothy 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 fish. And then of course, oh that's way too much. Then of course I simply just I, I simply just thread the eye here, like if it was. Um, like if it was uh, I was was tying this on, and uh, and you can you can you can tie this onto the hook here. I recommend that you double the uh, the monofilament, but basically you can see 
how you can how you can continue this and you just do exactly the same of course the hackle and the bead should be on the hook and and basically you could just do like this and instead of having the hook down here you, you just have three shanks or something like that then you would have the tail vibrate a lot uh, instead of instead of uh, in, you know having the hook in front or you can basically do like this and and you have two hooks but then you would ha again re recommend that you have the bead on the last part of the fly here and also the hackle on the last part so go Pull that off, take this out, and of course the fly is not finished, we're, we're gonna have to, you know, uh, uh, go to town on this with, uh, uh, with the dubbing brush to get this brushed out as much as possible. So basically I take a needle and I hold this off to the side, and then of course... And there you basically you have the ragworm. And as I was saying, this ragworm it really really has an insane amount of movement in the water. Uh, it looks so so awesome. It's it's fairly easy to cast even though it's it's fairly long, uh, but it, it doesn't soak up too much water, um, and uh, and it it just it just moves really really erratic in the water and just looks looks fantastic. And if you wanted to add even more action, you could you could add a, a magic head um, or or something like that, a small disc something like that would would give this even even more um, would give this even more. Um, more movement, but um, well, that basically that was it. Uh, the ragworm, the uh, the second worm, uh, is what I'm gonna call this fly. Uh, and uh, well, I hope you enjoyed. You can of course buy the full material kit for this fly on on my 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 web shop. It's called Nordic Anglers. And if you haven't done so already, it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to the channel. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, well, good luck out on the water.